You're watching The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. I'm telling you, sex, sex symbol extraordinaire. Is that okay. what it is? I think I, 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 I should have said that. That's something you should have said, but shoot your shot, bro. Damn. Shut up, man. Michael Jesus B. Jordan. Oh, my God. Sex What's going symbol on, extraordinaire. Yo? Michael B. Jordan. <laughs> y'all know good and well all the ladies and all the fellas like Michael B. Jordan. Okay? Ask him to take your shirt off now. Okay. Oh, man. Oh, man. You, you man. Now, he jumped Escalated out the real quick. Real nah, quick. I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't say all that. You guys, okay. this is awkward. And <laughs> Jesus there's Christ. There's a movement going on now, and you guys can't just harass Michael B. <laughs> 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 That's right. You had to say that, not me. You had to say it. You had to say it. You had to say it. <laughs> well, uh, well, how are you, sir? I'm doing good, man. How has your life changed since uh, Black Panther? It's insane. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, you know kind of known before. I guess now it's just it's uh, I can't go anywhere. Malls off limits. You know what I'm saying? Postmates. You know what I'm saying? My Postmates bill went through the roof. I'm yeah. in the house. Uh, it, it's just uh, it's, it's incredible, especially with the kids, the next generation, man. Just seeing them kind of how excited they've been, you know, after they're seeing the movie and just kind of their reaction to me walking around has been has been pretty incredible. Incredible. That buried me in the ocean with my ancestors that jumped from ships because they knew death was better than bondage. Who wrote that line? That was Ryan, man. Wow. Yeah, Ryan, Ryan Coogler, is, uh, he, he's incredible, man. We just wanted to, you know, really get the essence of what Killmonger was trying to, was trying to say and, you know, going in chains, trying to, you know, trying to, Trying to live, it wasn't really in, on his agenda. He was willing to die for what he believed in, and you know, going out like his ancestors did was was proving his point. I think I think he won. I think he got his point across in the end. Yes, you see, he did. You see T'Challa actually go back to Oakland. You know, what I'm saying, buy the buildings, really like you know, open up the borders of Wakanda. So that was you know, Killmonger's victory. I want to say. You said you, you, said you had to keep a diary during the time that you did Black Panther. Yeah, for most of my characters in general, um, not for television, but for film, I like to write a diary from like the earliest memory of a character up into the first page of the script. It just kind of gives me like a backstory, a, a subtext to always know where my characters are at. So I always kind of like keep those. So I got a like a you know a, a crate full of like you know me notebooks of like all my characters that I played thus far, and it's kind of. You know, you gonna do me. anything with that? You think? One I don't day? know. Maybe like maybe when it's all said and done, or like you know, at the end of it, you know, something that people kind of look back on and just kind of get a, a subtext to all the characters that I. That's actually a good idea. I don't know, maybe something like that. Mm -hmm. Never really thought about it like that. Well, let's break it down. Let's go to the beginning. What made, what made, what introduced you to this character? Why did you want to play Killmonger? Ryan Coogler. Yeah, I mean, he just called me up and was like, "Yo, Mike, you want to do this movie?" <laughs> and I was <laughs> like, yeah, you. "Yeah, exactly." And he was, and it was cool. So there's no it audition was, or nothing. <laughs> nah, it was like we wasn't even. Um, uh huh. We just, as soon as he got the job, pretty much, he hit me up a little bit after that. And we was just like, yo, you want to play this, you know, Killmonger? You know what I'm saying? A villain? I think it'd be a good move for me. I was like, all right, cool. Was you, into, was you into comics? Was you into? Yeah, I was a big comic guy growing up. Marvel so. or DC? More Marvel. Okay. I mean, I always liked like Batman, you know what I'm saying? But, yeah. Batman might have been the best one. The best DC. one, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? He was like, for me, he was just the smartest. He was always like a, like ahead of everybody else. He mm -hmm. had ways to kill everybody, just in case they started tripping. I always thought that was like super dope. But Marvel was always like top notch for me. Yeah, but they were jumping out the window online saying Batman can beat Thanos. That ain't happening. Bro. No, never. No, no, no. He's not that smart. No, mm -mm. <laughs> it wasn't going to happen. Mm -mm. Nah. So I've always been a big comic book guy growing up. But so playing Killmonger was like a no brainer for sure. And how it was my you, first time playing the villain. How did you prepare for the role? Like, did you have to bulk up? Was it a lot of training? Did you watch a lot yeah. of videos of black men getting shot by police? <laughs> nah. Did you really get angry at white people? <laughs> nah, I mean, that didn't, I mean, that's not too hard. You know what I'm saying? Like, for me, it was more or less, uh, sorry, allergies. Look, okay. Um, Nah, just <laughs> <laughs> not, not just allergies. Not just allergies. No, no, it ain't that hard for me out there. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Um, nah, it's one of them things where, like, uh, you know, it, it took me to a dark place. This character, not even a dark place, but I just uh, isolated. You know what I mean? Like it was one of those things where, you know, Killmonger, what he was fighting for, wasn't too far from you know what the culture was feeling at the moment. You Absolutely. know what I'm saying? It, it was an opportunity for me to kind of express. I think what our generation is feeling right now, you know, through my art, you know what I'm saying? And that was that was like a, a real liberating, you know what I'm saying, feeling mm -hmm. for me. So, you know, I spent a lot of time away from my family. I didn't really talk to my mom and my dad, you know what I'm saying, or like my brothers and sisters and stuff like that. You know, I was, uh, you know, I worked out a lot. It was a sad place, man. I just kind of like stayed to myself. Mm -hmm. yeah, so the physical aspect was, that was the easy part. Mentally kind of going to that lonely place and willing to do whatever it takes to kind of free his people was the, not the, was the more challenging part, you know what I'm saying? But it was a lot of fun too. What about white women? Did you cut off white women during that? Come on, man! <laughs> Why was that go back there? I like women. Period. All women. Everybody's on the table. Okay. 
Everybody's on the table. Everybody's on the table, man. Everybody. How, how much? How much of Killmonger philosophy do you agree with? Um, I mean, I feel like first of all, it's a movie. You know what I'm saying? So there's a lot of things that Killmonger has to do to service the character. You know what I'm saying? To service the story. You know what I'm saying? To the challenge T'Challa. He's a tool. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying in that movie. But there's a lot of it that you know. I mean, you grew up in an oppressed society. You know what I'm saying? Systemic society. You know, you're gonna create. Killmongers, like you, you can create that. So I feel like there's, there's some that I agree with, there's some that I don't. He's an extreme version of what I think a lot of people feel today, and it was happy. I was like glad to kind of be able to play that character and like bring that to the screen. And that's why them little double them little Cree jabs he gave me just now. <laughs> <laughs> you should have fell out. You got a little bit. Did you anticipate the movie would have the impact that it was going to have when you were filming it? I mean, I thought we. I thought we had something special, you know, if we all kind of did our jobs, you know what I'm saying, from behind the camera, in front of the camera. I never imagined that it was going to have the reach that it did. I did. I told really? Ryan last summer, I said, you know Black Panther's going to make over a billion dollars. And he was like, what? I said, I'm telling you, because you're going to have all the Marvel fans and yeah. then every black person in America who ain't even up on comics going to go see it. It's going to do over a billion. No, and then we didn't really account for, I think, people going to see it three, four, or five times. You know I saw it three times. That's, that's what's up. <laughs> we, so, we appreciate And so many that. people buying out the theaters also exactly. and showing their support as well. Being able to like take kids that wouldn't necessarily have the opportunity mm-hmm. or the means to go see the film. So it was, it was, a, it was a big deal. And it's kind of like, it's kind of surreal, but the impact hasn't really hit me right now. It's still like, because it's still living, it's still yeah, growing, yeah. you know? So I think the real impact for me personally won't happen until, like, you know, years later mm-hmm. after the dust really settles. But you can see the shift because Denzel, Denzel was like, yo, Michael can have all my old hoes. <laughs> it's his time that. now. That's what he said. Didn't he say no, he said, you're the next. Like, you're next. It was, it was, that was a cool interview I did with him in the New York Times, man. Honestly, just to be able to have a conversation mm-hmm. with him, mm-hmm. you know, and just spit those gems and being able to, like, you know, Hear him kind of like you know kick that wisdom mm-hmm. was 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 a uh, was a big deal for me. He said you next. It's a lot of pressure, bro. A little bit. <laughs> now for me, it's like I mean, I'm just gonna keep doing what I've been doing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, creating a production company. You know, Outlaw Society was a big deal for me um, because I realized like the, the true power is behind the camera. You know what I'm saying? I, everybody wants to you know be in front of the camera, be a star, mm-hmm. be famous. You know what I'm saying? All that good stuff, and that's cool and fun and all that good stuff, but. You know, when you got to make the decisions, when you get a chance to employ people, mm-hmm. put key people of color, you know what I'm saying, women, you know what I'm saying, like in in, in those positions that are really going to make a difference, that's when you really start to see some real so change. It's Fahrenheit 451 that is from your production company? Or? It, a, a co-production, you co-production. Know, between, um, you know, HBO um, and um, uh, Ramin Barani's, uh, who's uh, one, our, our director, his production company as well. And it was my first, you know, real project that I got a chance to produce. So That's that was exciting. Nah, very much so. It, but you know, to go from like Wallace on the wire, you know, being casted in front of the camera to, you know, fifteen years later being able to like produce something, it, it was a it was a milestone for me. I, I wondered what y'all was gonna do after Black Panther. So What you mean? Like just in general, like like mm-hmm. you know what, what what's the next role you take when you do something that monumental? Yeah. yeah. So so why Fahrenheit <laughs> four five one? <laughs> um I think it because it, it it's so relevant to what's going on today. You know what I'm saying? With like media control, you know, anti intellectualism, you know what I'm saying? The fact that, you know, uh, free thought, free thinking, all the distractions that we have due to technology, you know what I'm saying? Uh, propaganda, et cetera, et cetera. You know, what Ray Bradbury did, you know, over 60 years ago is still very much so relevant today. Mm-hmm. And we wrote that movie before the, you know, the presidential election. So it's like, there's a lot of things that are in this film that, that are very real today. Um, Obviously, there's some changes due to like you know technology and our digital, the digital era that era that we live in. We incorporated a lot of like you know, kind of futuristic sci-fi things, but it's in the near future. Like things that we were like, okay, cool, we could see if we go ten more years down the road, we could probably be in that situation right now. So that's one of the reasons why I really wanted to step into that character and play that role. You knew it was gonna be a TV movie, or you didn't even care? No, nah, I knew it was gonna be on HBO. Okay, okay. I mean, for me, honestly, it was it was um it was an opportunity to a tell that story be able to produce something, get a credit, you know what I'm saying, under my production company, get some real stake mm-hmm. with the credibility of HBO, you know what I'm saying, to be able to like, you know, have my logo go up right after HBO is like, okay, cool, that instantly gives my, my company a lot of a lot of cachet. And then, um, yeah, and the story I believed in, you know, working with Michael Shannon also, you know what I'm saying, he's like a credible actor, so it was it was a win-win for me all the way around. But what got what got you into acting? I know you you, you were raised in Newark. Yep. And, and a lot of times Newark is probably one of those places where it's, it's one of the well, hardest places shot. to get out. <laughs> yeah, you could For get sure. shot. Somebody. I mean, we all from the city, you feel me? So, yeah. yeah, so how, how, what got you into acting? 
Um, I mean, it was uh, it was random. Uh, my mom has lupus or whatever. She was going to a, a doctor's appointment when I was like 11 years old. Mm -hmm. I was sitting in the waiting room. She came out. The receptionist was like, "Yo, do you want to um, you know, you should get your son into modeling." I started out modeling for like Toys R Us and models. And How stuff old were like you? That. 11, 12, something like that. Oh, she was a pedophile. No, cut it out, cut it out. No, she had, she had two sons that was in the business. She oh, probably okay. like, you know, my mom was probably like talking to her at, you know, some other appointments about, you know, you know we were poor but growing up, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, make extra bucks. It was easy, come to the city, go to like, go see, you know, quick booking, whatever, whatever. And um, and I guess over time, I, I started booking. So I guess over the next like year or so, my agent was just like, yo, do you want to like start going out for like, you know, commercials and mm -hmm. background and extra work and all that stuff. And then it just slowly evolved into acting. Like I never really like took acting seriously until probably The Wire mm. Mm. and being around like Idris and, and uh, David Simon and J.D. Williams and Andre Royo and all these like you know, all the phenomenal veteran actors on that show. They're like, yo, Mike, you can actually do something with this. Mm. You can make a career out of this. And that's when I kind of started taking it seriously. So you've had a relationship with HBO for a while. Then. Yeah. In yeah, it's case. been it's been like 16 years. Mm -hmm. A lot more respect now, I'm sure. Without a doubt. I mean, it's yeah. growth. You know what I mean? I kind of like paid my dues as a kid and kind of grew into the man that I am today. And looking back at it, I was like, I guess I was a child actor, but it wasn't like I got too much too fast where I was like emotionally not able to handle what was going on. So you ain't going to see me on the, you know, running the street going crazy. You know what I'm saying? No drug habits, none of that, yeah. all that <laughs> shit. I got a good family, like my family, my friends, everybody kind of keeps me grounded. And if you ever around me and my friends, you're like, damn, you, you might need some new friends because they hate you. They keep it real with me. They talk shit. You know what I'm saying? They just they keep me humble. You still live with your parents? They true? live with me. Oh, they live with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, I mean, funny, that I was mean, a very like, funny story. Yeah, the but, way it's it was like, positioned. but it's like, why wouldn't I? You know what I'm saying? If you get an opportunity, you make the money, you know what I'm saying? Make enough money to be able to take care of your family that took care of you your whole life. Why wouldn't you move them out? And you're never home. You're right. LA, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And you I'm feel, never home. You feel like you got short shafted for Black Panther, speaking of money? What you mean? They, I was looking at the salaries. The salaries Did you? Didn't look too chunky. What, what he made? So it's, it's, if you look at the salary, what did he say he made? Like maybe two million. I don't know. I mean, I'm just. I mean, I'm, that's probably wrong because it's the internet. How you? How you getting? How you getting these numbers? Where are you getting these numbers from? The internet. The, the, the internet. The internet. The internet. He's such a that's bird. what I'm saying. That's why 451 is so important. Everything you read on the internet ain't true. True. Right. True. You know true, what I'm saying? True. But nah, but it's one of those things. Where like, I mean, you live with your mom. That's what I'm asking, man. You know, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, it's one of those things where, like, you know, at the end of the day, like, Marvel's Marvel, and we got to be do what's best for the project at that stage in the game. You know what I'm saying? We're, you know, individually in our acting careers, we're all kind of like, you know, re reaching our quote. We're doing what we got to do. So. Got you. Climbing that ladder. Yeah, you have a Netflix movie, too? Or it deals with Netflix? What's yeah, going on? Yeah, I got, a, um, I got a, a show that I um that I sold to Netflix, uh, Raising Dion. Mm -hmm. It's about a, a single mom raising her uh, eight-year-old with superpowers. It's told through the mom's perspective. Um... A oh, superhero kid? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh wow! That's yeah, dope. yeah, yeah. Single black mom, you know, raising a kid and uh, you know producing that as well. So uh, I'm actually I'm, I'm gonna be in it as well. I'm starring in it for a couple episodes. That was the trade off. You know, when you when you get to that certain point of a, uh, you know, uh, you know, making production deals. You uh, right you now as an actor, <laughs> you gotta kind of like negotiate a little bit. You know, mm -hmm. trade yourself off a little bit for a couple episodes to get that producer credit to get that show on the air so that was one of those things but netflix is an incredible home to work with great collaborators they believe in the creative they give us a lot of control to go off and do our thing so i teamed up with macro charles king over there he, he's amazing and um yeah man we got we're getting ready to start shooting at this summer so. well let's talk about these women man you know come we on about what's going on no, why you keep, well, why everybody want to know about what i'm doing with my you, life you got to be disciplined michael because they on you all right <laughs> I, they on you now now, now recently this girl from temple got into your dms and bought you a smoothie and you pulled up on no them. she, she didn't, didn't. Yeah, and you pulled up on it look at this wow. <laughs> i love how he, he bought you a smoothie and you pulled up on it <laughs> so, so, so easy listen 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 if you read the internet i declined the smoothie, okay? okay? She didn't buy me no smoothie. So let's wrap it. Was a nice on listen. Gesture on but your she part. appreciates so it. So I slid in his DMs and yeah. then this happened. So but you this, went to go see it. Listen, this no, no, this is what happened, right? <laughs> so this guy right here, boy. So uh we're shooting at Temple University and uh, our base camp is behind the dorm rooms. My okay. sister went to Temple, you know what I'm saying? Like literally used to stay in that same the dorm rooms that we were at at the moment. I was coming out of here and makeup trailer. It was in the windows, went crazy, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Went out, talked uh, talked to a couple of them through the window, just like, you know, showing them some love or whatever yeah. the case may be. Went off of the cook. I was like, cool, cook me something, whatever. Just being nice. They slid in my DMs. Da, 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 da. Where can I send you the food? I answered a couple of them. Said, cool, just come down and meet me at my at the, at the the base camp. I tell the security to chill out. Went out there. She gave me a plate. Some other friends. I told her to bring her friends. We, we took some pictures. You ate it? That was it. 
I took a couple bites. You not worried about period blood? Come period on, blood. come oh, on, nah, no, no, nah, no, nah, nah, no, 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 no one does that's that. That's how they get you. That's roots, voodoo. Nah, I mean, nah, I took a couple bites, whatever, man. Really? It was cool. I mean, smart. whatever, that's what I'm saying. I took a couple yeah, bites, man. it was cool. Hey, let's tell Paige come in, man. I got, I got, I got shots I need to shoot for my I, people. I, oh, my I, goodness. I, I, Stop it. Stop Paige, come I, in, I, tell I took a couple bites. Wait, it was cool, though, man. But at the end of the day, like... Now, what's the I'm, craziest thing a girl has done to get your attention? Has there any of them popped up at your crib, laid in your bed, <laughs> in your She's hotel room? no. Listen, you see that girl? See the blonde right there? She said, no what? She's been talking about eating your ass for months. <laughs> no, oh literally eating your ass. What? Oh, my she God. She literally, I had her on video saying, I will eat Michael B. Jordan's <laughs> ass. She don't even want to come in here now. Out of control. You out of control. I'm just telling you what you're saying. You make an eye contact and everything. I want all these girls to have the same energy that they have when Michael B. Jordan Well, now, hold on. Rumor has it that he's in a relationship, so maybe I'm really, man. Look, I'm I'm chilling, man. I keep I keep my I'm keeping my personal life out of this. I'm keeping I'm keeping that. I'm chilling. So what's the craziest thing a fan has done to try to get your attention, if anything? Um, I mean, I don't know, man. It, 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 Too much. It's a lot through social media. I mean, mm -hmm. I think that's. I think everybody has a platform because they feel like you know we're so easy ac accessible. You know what I'm saying? You can get to anybody through you know Instagram, Twitter. Somebody's going to see it on some blog or something mm -hmm. like that. So I mean, I don't know. This one fan in Philly, I guess, made a uh, cutout of me and like you know it actually took me to prom. You know what I'm saying? Oh, took oh, your cutout to prom. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, that was a little extreme. You know what I'm saying? So I responded back to her. So she got me. <laughs> she got my attention with she that one. Yeah, she got my attention with that one. So. I mean, I'm not a rapper. Like these rappers be having like, you know what I'm saying, these fans and stuff going crazy. Like I think musician fans and like actor fans are different. You know what I mean? I think it's a different type of like, you know, obsession a little bit. So I don't really get too many craze, craze, craze fans. So what's the I equivalent think. of a woman throwing her panties on the stage if you were a singer in in the acting world? Sending a, a screenshot of her with without panties on? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> now listen, uh, Tiffany Haddish. Yeah, my family. Uh, I Tiffany's love her. crazy. I love her too. She's and, crazy. But she told me something. I don't even know if I should be repeating this. Oh man! So don't. No, listen. She. <laughs> <laughs> so don't. <laughs> she said she's not shaving her pubic hair until she has sex with you. Okay. Now you know it's gonna be hot this summer. Do you do you, do you, do you want to have her down there all bushy? Can you make that happen? I know you're gonna see her tonight at the Met Gala. So you gonna put that on me? Yes. What you mean? I ain't got nothing to do with me. Walk, let her walk around with a bush. Well, I ain't got nothing to do with me. I ain't never, this is the first time I'm hearing about it. Wow. How long ago was this? This was yesterday. She so she ain't got a day. No, she, <laughs> she got a day. She got a day. No, no, what you talking about? She's been growing it. Okay. That'd be a good look for you. She a real live African princess. Man, why don't you do stand up, bro? Man, stop, you don't think man. about it? What's up? No, I know, I know. Why don't you be able to do stand up? Black man, you got a situation, man. Black men don't. You, oh, you. Oh, you got a relationship. Wait, yo, yeah, well, why y'all trying to bait me in the answer this goddamn question? I'm chilling. I'm chilling. I'm chilling. What is this media? white woman's name true. that you involved? What, what, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Why are you leave me alone? Or anything. <laughs> <laughs> or anything. Or anything. I'm just asking. I'm just asking. Man, I'm chilling, man. So, no, so no real interest in Tiffany Haddish is what you tell me. Me, Tiffany's dope. So you, oh, that's a good, okay. He's saying you're not going to bait him in this interview is basically All I'm telling you is when you see her tonight at the Met Gala, she got a full bush down there. So what should I say? it's on you. It's on me. To get it removed. Okay? You her friend, right? You yes. know each other a long time. Why can't, you can't, you can't convince her to take care of that? She wanted you. She said she's not anyway, shaving Anyway, the bush is back in style, according to Amber Rose. This is awkward, man. And this then she, awkward. you got to think about all the money she going to make in the future, man. That's a good, y'all can build your own little economy. He's going to make money, That's what I'm saying. Them together. You don't think so? Leave me alone. <laughs> leave, leave me alone. <laughs> so, Michael, nah, you, you've been doing all these roles where you have to be very fit and in shape. You think you yep. could do something where you actually had to uh, gain, say, 60 pounds out of shape? I can't wait. You would do that? Oh, man, I can't wait. Just like sit. <laughs> I got to do it soon because like, the older you get, the harder it is to get back into shape. So, mm -hmm. I really can't wait to like play a role where I got to put on a lot of weight. I can just eat. Not, not do work nothing, out. not work out. <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be awesome. Right now, we're in the middle of shooting Creed too, and it's like my body's like, oof, I am tired. Right. I am tired. Was, I am tired. Was there any part of you that didn't want to come back and do Creed too because Ryan wasn't doing it? In the beginning, I was I was a little hesitant. Honestly, it, um, you know, it was something that we started, we created, you know. But he came on board, and he's you know he's producing it as well, so he still has his fingerprints on. It, he's still involved. But in the beginning, you know. Uh, yeah, it was a little hesitation there. But Stephen Caples, when we finally got him, we locked down to a director. He's from Cleveland. Um, you know, went to USC. Um, you know, uh, he did this film called The Land. You know, did a lot, of, made a lot of noise in Sundance. He's an incredible filmmaker, and uh, we're really lucky to have him because we're he's putting his fingerprints on it too. So we, we're good, we're in good shape. I don't like the premise though. Wait, I, so you don't even know the premise. Stop yeah, reading the, the internet. The, the whole, Stop reading the, the internet. The son of the Russian is so predictable. Like. 
first of all, the second one, the sequel was really tough. Okay. Two to anything is really hard to make, you know what I'm saying? And to really like bring the nostalgic back and tie in, you know what I'm saying, with Rocky and and and, and still give Creed his own legacy and like branch off down and you know, give Creed his mm -hmm. own his own lane. There's a there's a there's a natural tie in, there's not natural balance there between making the second one a little bit bigger than the first one. You know what I'm saying? Ha we didn't have a, a true bad guy. There wasn't a real antagonist yeah, in yeah. the first film. Um, it was really about the origin story of Adonis. So this one, we're going to try to, you know, make things a little bit more spicy. Well, Envy cried during though. this one because the first one, we were oh, on a flight boy. together. And mm. I look over at Envy, and he's crying. I was tearing. I just said, I was crying. And, and, and for the tear. record, your shirt was off when he was crying. <laughs> so I don't know what exactly. I, like, I don't know if it was tears of joy. Like, what what is is about this? <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not too sure. It was a little awkward. It wasn't even there. I heard about it. It wasn't even there. I don't even know what made me cry. A little tear came down. <laughs> he was like, why are you crying? His eyes were all red. You know you like you're naturally more emotional when you're uh, playing in there? You're more you're you're more likely to cry watching the film. Where'd you learn that? You yeah, I'll take that. I'm just saying. That's no, I read it on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> and we're supposed to believe that. You're telling us not to believe everything. <laughs> Speaking of the internet, this is America. I saw you tweeting that you, I mean, you posted on Instagram how much you enjoyed that video. Yeah, man, it, it was incredible. I think it's like right on time, honestly. Um, you can watch it five, six, seven times and see something different. What's right. your perception? Because that's what we've been asking people all morning. What's I mean, honestly, it's, uh, you know, I feel like Donald, you know, we, we were actually kicking it last night. We were um, we were hanging out last night. He's in town for the Met and stuff like that. We, we were, you know, singing his praises and stuff all night. Man, we had a good time. But, um... I feel like Donald is the distraction. You know what I'm saying? Child, Child's Gambino. Sorry, Ch mm -hmm. Child's Gambino is a distraction to what's really going on. You know what I'm saying? In, in the world right now. Just as much as we're distracted by everything else that's going on mm -hmm. and not really pay attention to the world around us. So I, I, I encourage people to watch the video, but don't look at it. At Charlie. Yeah, Try not saw, to. Yeah, because you see the, the pale horse in the background. Exactly, with the cops. The cop car following yep. you. You see the kids on their cell phones. Recording oh, everything. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? You see, you see, uh, you know, Donald, you know what I'm saying, shoot my man, you know what I'm saying, Trayvon Martin, you know what I'm saying, popping him in, in the head or whatever, but then also seeing him. Trayvon Martin? Isn't that Trayvon Martin? Is his father? No, it's not. It's not? It's not? It's, not? Okay, okay. it's another artist. It's um, another? Um, yeah, it's, a, it's an artist. All right, Miss Boat. Yeah. Take that back. Because yeah. a lot of people thought that. Yeah, that's yeah, what I thought. That's not his it wasn't? Okay, cool. I saw the resemblance and, okay, all good. But anyway, but you see the way, he uh, gun care. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Where you put the gun, you know what I'm saying, nightly away, but the body is dragged away. Like the gun in the people. Exactly. Yeah. So there's a lot of little things in there that I, I feel like is um, super important. And he's a genius. Heroes is an amazing tool. The director um, does a lot of Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And uh, all of his uh, childish uh, music videos. So, yeah, man, it's uh, it was a good video. I loved it. I just wish that uh, in that one scene where he shot the choir, I wish it was a white person actually shoot in the choir instead of, instead instead of, of Donald. It yeah, could have yeah, been yeah, Teddy yeah. Perkins. Because I don't, I, Oof. I, I, yeah. feel, I feel like people, I don't like the optics of black people killing black people. I see like what you're that. saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it might have been a little bit more like clear yeah. of what he's trying to say. Yeah, because I mean, if you white and you watching that, all you see is black, on black, black, black. people killing black people. Yeah, I see what you're saying. You know what I mean? And it reinforces the negative stereotype you already have of us anyway. But other than that, I thought it was a, a, a genius video. Iconic video. Oh, I, I think it goes down legendary. But absolutely. Michael B. Jordan got to get up out of it. He got some okay. TV to do. Okay. <laughs> All right, yeah, he's very busy. But we really appreciate you for stopping through. I Thank appreciate you. this, I man, because I ball. always tell people from Hollywood, especially the black actors, they forget about their black bases. You know what I'm saying? So it's good to see y'all still come, come through. Come back to the court. Always, and rush man. off to the white people. Nah, nah, come nah, on, man. Cut it out, cut it out, cut it out, man. I, ne I, never, I never lose touch, man. Never Lord. lose touch, bro. All right. That's well, just me. I appreciate you guys. Absolutely. It's Michael B. Jordan. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning.